guys from Thailand, retired and living the dream. Today's story is going to be about why the bar girls get such a hard time over here in Thailand. There are many, many stories about bad bar girls and how they rip you off and they don't make good wives and they don't make good girlfriends. And in some of the cases, yes, it's true. But I'm going to give you a couple of examples of people and stories that I know personally from years ago. And one of the stories is a bad story with regard to a Thai girl ripping somebody off. Or is it a smart story? Make a comment down below whether she was a smart girl or whether she was a, a, a girl who was ripping people off. And the second story is going to be a good story because I like to balance the good and the bad. So let's start off with... Uh, Okay, is it a bad story? No, I don't think it is. I think it's a smart story from the girl who actually did this. Um, now, this girl comes from a, a village that I know up in Karat, and she was a very attractive young girl, and she had a, a couple of kids with a Thai man, and the Thai man sort of badly treated her, didn't give her much money, was always drinking and gambling, so they lived in a, a very, very horrible location really that's all i could say it was a sh basically a shed a wooden shack and he didn't work very hard and they were always struggling for money and so with a couple of kids it just creates problems money is always an issue living in the village is always a hard choice to, to do because farm work not very very well paid so so this 23 year old girl finished with a thai boyfriend had a couple of kids and okay what can she do and as with Thailand, the streets are always paved with gold in Pattaya in Bangkok. And you're going to meet a rich boyfriend and you're going to live happily ever after. Or so some of these village girls seem to think. Um, anyway, th this girl, again, stunning body, beautiful looking, 23 years old. She went to Pattaya and she started working in a, in a go-go bar and the go-go dancers are always bonny looking with a nice figure. So again, huge amounts of guys go into these, these clubs and pick these girls for short, short time, long time, and the money for go-go dancers in Pattaya is very, very, very good. Some of the girls are on a lot of money working as a go-go dancer in Pattaya. And she was on a good amount of money and she always had a, a good steady income from guys taking her for a long time or a short time in, in Padilla. So eventually, as with a lot of the girls that work in, in Padilla, they find a, a boyfriend that wants to take care of them. And invariably, there are lots of guys who wanted to take care of this girl. And is she going to tell everybody that you're the only one? Of course she is. She tells everybody, yeah, you're the only one, I'm not going to see anybody else. Send me some money and I won't work in the go-go bars and I'll live in the village. And this is what she did. She went back to the village and guys were sending her money every month and she built her own house from the money that the sponsors were sending. Now I know personally that she, at one time she was having four people sending her money. And then what happened, the Thai boyfriend came back on the scene because she's got some money now. And she, she always liked him, he was fun to be with, but just lazy. But now, of course, money isn't an option because she's got some money. And he comes back, he starts taking the money off her for, for living with his friends, for gambling and for drinking and that. So she sort of gets rid of the money very, very quickly. The guys are sending her money every month and then she's asking him to, to build her a house because she shows where she lives and the, the situation that she lives in. It was basically a shed that she lived in. So some people felt sorry for her and this guy sent her 200,000 baht and on the provision that she shows him photographs of the building getting built. And then he said, I'll send you a couple of hundred thousand baht every time I see progress on the building. So of course this lady now receives 200,000 baht and she's over the moon with that and okay, I want to start building the house. 
and of course the Thai boyfriend wanted his little share of, of money also. So she gave him 50 odd thousand baht and she started to build the house. And she got the concrete post put up and she got the roof put on. Then her boyfriend again said, I want another 50,000. So the 200,000 baht that she'd been sent by this boyfriend to start building the house, um, she only had 100,000 baht to get the house built. So of course when she sent pictures to the, to the sponsor who was sponsoring her every month, um, he says, you don't get a lot for 200,000 baht. And she says, well, yeah, it's, it's expensive to get builders in the village because everybody's farm workers, we have to get builders. She made the excuses up. And then by doing this, she had other sponsors. She was always asking them for money to help build the house. And then what she was doing, she was sending the same pictures to the same people, saying, this is how far I've got with your money, and this is what I need to do, this is what I need extra to be able to carry on building the house. So she had four people and at various times or location people became suspicious and basically one time or another all four of them dropped out because they didn't believe what she was saying. So then the money stopped, the Thai boyfriend went, so then she had to go back down to, to Patia and working in the same go-go bar again. So off she went down to Patia, same go-go bar, and over a period of six, seven months, she had another two or three sponsors who were giving her a monthly allowance to stop working at the go-go bars. So now she's back at home, carrying on getting the house built, sending the same photographs to the same people that were sponsoring her every month. And obviously this time she learned a lesson and the boyfriend tried to come back and she sort of sent him on his way. So now, long story short, she lives in a nice house that's been paid for by sponsors and at the end of the day there's different people come to her house at different times of the year and she's still getting money off I don't know how many people now that are sending her money every month but she doesn't work in the go-go bars anymore she gets people who send her money every month because she talks to them nicely online she's good at English she can be able to talk to people and that's how she's got her house. Now, is she daft or is the people who are sending her the money are daft? Is she a clever girl because she used her assets to be able to get other people to pay for a house in the countryside and now she lives there in a nice house and other people have paid for it? Is she ripping people off? I don't know. Leave your comments down below with regard to that one. And now the, the second story, which I think is a good story. Telephone! Telephone! So the second story, I think it's a heartwarming story and I think it's a story that um, portrays some of the reasons why these girls go to Pattaya and go to Bangkok to look for a, a better lifestyle. So, okay, again, this is a, another story that I know 100% true. All the stories that I tell on my channel are 100% true. There's no need to make it up because plenty of things goes on over here anyway. I've lived here for 11 years, so I've been told many, many, many stories over the 11 years. So this story, young girl, leaves school at 18, 19 years old, gets a job in a factory. Another girl that lives in the village, may I add, also, and she worked in Karat in a factory and she got a, a boyfriend that worked in the same factory and they were seeing each other for a, a number of years and basically Thai people work six days a week and you get one day a week off and you work about 12 hours a day. So consequently the majority of your life is spent by working, working, working. Anyway, she'd been with this young lad for a two or three years and then he started to play around and she suspected that he was playing around and found out that he was playing around and she actually caught him in bed with a, another, another girl in the apartment that they were renting so split up with him disillusioned with time men because things had started going downhill work work working all the time and she actually got stuck in the work, working six days a week, no boyfriend for three or four years, just saving up all of her money to hopefully live a better life. And then one weekend she came home 
and in the village there was one of her friends who was married to an Australian guy and she asked this lady, listen, I want the lifestyle that you have. How can I get the lifestyle that you have? You, you go live in Australia. She said, you have a beautiful house in the village here. She says, you seem to have the perfect life. And the girl who was married to this Australian guy, she said, I do, yeah, I have, I have a good life. But she said, the only way you can get this, because you live in the village, she said, you've got the patio. So I've got the patio and you'll find out that you can meet a foreigner and you can get this type of lifestyle. So she needed to learn English. So she took a break from her working in the factory in Karat and she uh, agreed with the boss that if things didn't work out for her, her job was left open for up to three months. So this girl worked for this other friend who was married to the Australian guy, cleaning the house and gardening and things like that just so she could learn English because they said they're going to learn English in this house and the only thing they'll speak is English all the time so she gets an understanding of being able to speak English. So because she was the gardener and the cleaner and the cook and everything in this house she got a salary so she managed to live without working in the factory. So it was only a small salary but she had enough money to live because she lived in the same village and so she had her own house. So after a couple of months, she thought, OK, I've learned enough English to be able to get, get by. She got the, the CDs, she did it online, and she had a number of friends who were doing this type of work in Pattaya. So again, the streets were paved with gold, with Pattaya. Again, naivety, village girl. She said, I want a man that doesn't drink, and doesn't smoke, and who's going to treat me nice, and who's going to take care of me. So yes, we all want people like that in our lives. So she had a, a couple of girls that she knew working in Patia, so she called them and they said, oh yeah, as soon as you get to Patia, come and have a word with me and I'll, I'll show you where you need to go. So she left home with 6,000 baht in her hand and that's all she had. That's all she had to go down to Patia with. So she gets on the bus, goes down to Patia, and when she gets in Patia, she rings her friends up who don't answer the phone. Now I'll come on to the reason why they didn't answer the phone a little bit later on. So now she's in Patia, all alone, no idea where to go, no idea what to do. So first of all, OK, I need to find somewhere to live. So now she finds this site with very cheap housing and she goes and inquires about how much it was to live in this, this accommodation and it was 4,000 baht for this accommodation for the month. She had no idea whether she could find any cheaper or better or whatever because it was getting towards eight o'clock on the night time now and she thought I need somewhere to stay so I'm going to stay in here I'm going to rent this place so she gave the guy 4,000 baht for the rent and then he came out with a thousand baht deposit and as she'd already given the 4,000 baht for the rent she wasn't going to get the 4,000 baht back because now she'd give him the money this is what usually happens if you give a Thai person your money you're never going to get it back so then she paid the 1,000 baht deposit as well, and now she's only got 1,000 baht left to her name. And she said, I needed 500 baht of that. Is my bus fare home in case something goes wrong? I need to get home, and I've got 500 baht to get home. So now, realisation, nobody answers the phone, none of her friends answer the phone for her in Patia. She's all alone. So she's in tears and she's sobbing and thinking, what have I done? You know, I'm in the place and I have no idea what I'm doing, where I'm going or what to do. And the little old lady that's across the landing heard her cry and went and knocked on the door and gave her a hug, give her a big hug and says, come here, I'll give you something to eat. And she said, my door's always open if you want some advice or you want somebody to talk to. She said, you're not alone here. She said, I'm your friend. I live just over the hallway. And she said, I'm always here. Don't be afraid. She said, you're not on your own living in Pattaya. So that was the first friend she made in Pattaya. Luckily, it was a little old lady. And she comforted her and gave her a big hug. Now, again, this girl was from the village. No idea what goes on in the big city. So the following day, on the afternoon, OK, where do I start? So she was wandering around Pattaya. No idea where to go. The, the, the girls who were friends and supposedly be there to help her, never answered the phone to her. 
And the reason why they never answered the phone to her, because now she was in Pattaya, they looked upon her, she'd be looking for free accommodation, free food, and the girls weren't going to help her with that at all. And the girls looked upon this girl as competition also. So if, if they worked in their bar, they're competition. And this girl was a good looking girl, so they didn't want the competition. And that is the reason why they didn't answer the phone. So anyway, this girl wandered up and down the streets and she found a bar. She went in and she said, are you looking for staff? Now the bars are always looking for staff, especially good looking staff. And this girl was a, a, a bonny looking girl, 23 years old. And because she's an attractive girl, she's obviously taken out of the bar by some foreigners and all new to this and very, very scared, very, very unsure about everything. And from day one, hates it. But thinks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to meet somebody nice. I am going to meet somebody nice. And within the first couple of weeks, I saw the actually feeling goes down okay maybe he drinks a little bit maybe he smokes a little bit but as long as he treats me nice and working in the bars you see everybody some really really nice people once i've had a few beers they turn into not so very nice people and the amount of of guys who think you're a toy you're a play thing it's it's a horrible place for the girls to work in the bars and that's why I was saying about respect the girls who work in the bar, respect the girls who does work in the go-go bars etc. It's not the best of life for people to choose but the fact that is the girls who work in Pattaya and Bangkok are from the villages, the likelihood of meeting foreigners is very very slim. So they have to put themselves into this position to be able to meet the foreigners. Online now is a little bit different. People can meet other people online. But still, if you're a newbie coming to Thailand and a girl you're talking to lives in the middle of a village somewhere, what's the likelihood of you going to go up to that village and stay there and date the girl? Because in the village where this girl lived, there is no bars, there is no clubs, there is nothing at all. It is rural Thailand, nothing to do but farmers and village people and village life. You are never going to do that, no matter how nice a girl is on the internet. So these girls who want a better life go looking for it and put themselves into a situation where they can meet other guys and hopefully the knight in shining armour comes along and takes them away from all of this lot. And sometimes it does. So anyway, getting back to the, the story with this girl, um, it got to five weeks and she said, this is enough, I don't like it. I'm gonna go back to the factory job because she had the three months off in which she could go and try this thing for herself and then go and work back in the factory if she didn't like this. And she hated it. She absolutely hated every single minute of doing what she had to do in Pattaya to, to earn some money and gone are the illusions of finding a nice man. So let's face it, the majority of guys who go to Pattaya don't treat the girls very well at all and they get drunk, smoking. It's, it's a horrible place for anybody to work. So I have great respect for the girls who work in Pattaya to put themselves into this situation hoping to find that knight in shining armour on his white horse, come to rescue them, take them away from all of this lot. Now it does happen, because this girl, in the last week or so of working there, she was just waiting for the end of the month so she could get a salary and go back home to Karat. And then in that last week, she met a man who was nice, didn't drink, didn't smoke, and he treated her well, and he asked her to come out of the bar and of course she was already going to leave the bar anyway so she didn't have anything to lose and she thought well if it doesn't work out with him then I'm not bothered about it because I'm going to leave the bar anyway. So anyway long story short again she left the bar so as far as I know she's still with this guy living in the village in her village and they both get on very well together. He's happy with the village life. She's happy with the fact that she doesn't have to work in the factory anymore and she doesn't have to work in Pattaya anymore. 
So for this girl, it was a, a good outcome and a good story from all of the trials and tribulations of actually putting herself into that system to try and get the man to be able to rescue her for the rest of her life and fingers crossed everything goes well for this girl. So there's the two different stories of two girls living in the same village with sort of different outcomes and different methods of being able to get what they want. Now you've heard the stories I'd like for you to leave your comments down below with regard to what you thought of both stories. Were they smart girls or were they ripping foreigners off for money? I think in my own mind that they were both smart girls and they both got the objectives of what they wanted at the end of the day. It's using a smart mind, smart mentality, gets them what they want. So if you've got any stories, any comments, please share, leave them down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. So from Les, retired and living the dream. Until the next video, bye for now.